All right, so in this video, we are going to cover my entire Notion productivity system. I've been using this now for a little bit over a year, and let me tell you, it absolutely made me more productive. It's definitely made me into six figures by using this template. And I also travel full time. And so my environment's changing. This has absolutely kept me grounded and kept me in line. And also at the end of this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how you can get this template completely for free. I'm not charging anything. I, I run a company, so I don't need to charge people to use my templates. So let's actually dive in. So what you'll notice here at the top again if you're new to notion then you'll just need to set up a free account you don't have to pay for it and then you can take my link and just import all of this into your account and then obviously just change it a little bit so it fits you and it fits your needs now you could alter this and you could change these things to really fit anything that you're doing whether it's school or university or you run a different style of business than i do you can absolutely still use this monitor it and make it work for your company so let's dive in at the very top we have the q1 goal so this is kind of going into goal setting but i think a lot of people when they make a yearly goal they give themselves a year right and that's just way too long i like to break things down into quarterly goals that way it's much sooner right? it's happening much quicker if you set a yearly goal of lose 10 pounds you're going to wait till the last two months before you review that and think damn i didn't hit my goal right so what i like to do is set a quarterly goal break it down to monthly goals and then also break it down to weekly goals and then to daily goals and this allows you to do that very easily and also very quickly so let's go ahead and dive in as soon as you log in here as soon as you download this you'll see q1 goal grow xyz business in the next three months perhaps that's your main goal i would put that right there so every single day this is the first thing that i see when i sign into my computer put your main goal right there okay next we have the personal goal so again this is an example maybe you want to move out of your current apartment it's a personal goal retire my mom maybe that's another personal goal that you have it's a goal that i have figured i would throw that in there for you okay financial Again, this is an example, grow SWAS business agency to 5K per month profit all online remotely, right? So that's a pretty good goal. If you run a company in a different space, you can put in your revenue or your financial goal. Maybe you just do SMMA, which if you do, I recommend you do SWAS, which is software with a service. Okay, mission, inspire those around me, change the world of psychology forever so this could be your mission again this is just a demo it's a it's a sample so you can put in your mission there or maybe it's just to retire your family maybe your mission is just i want to retire my mom and my dad so they don't have to work anymore so all right let's actually dive in here so we have an example theme that you would have is let's say monk mode growth year or maybe digital nomad year where you're finally traveling you sold all your stuff that's what i did last year i sold all my stuff and i and i traveled so last year's theme was digital nomad i mean i'm, I'm still traveling now but anyways you could put in your themes there then we have annual goals so you're going to click into this and you can put in three main goals i don't think you really need to have 10 different goals you can kind of divide them up in categories and then have overarching goals and then in here you'll see start of 2023 motivations right first quarter review you can do second quarter review and all these are broken down into quarters so what actions are required for you to hit your end your goal in each and every single quarter right so super powerful there let's go ahead and keep on moving i have a nice clock here a nice timer so i'm using notion and dark mode. you can enable that you can just google like notion dark mode but if you do this in the regular mode this will this timer kind of fits in nicely where the whole screen is is white there so let's keep on scrolling so we have the bi-week goal so the way you're going to use this you are going to type in filter and you're going to type in the dates so let's say right now it's January 17th. You're going to type in 16th. So this is technically week three, right? So week three. Okay. You would open that up and this is your weekly goal. You can change these cover photos. Some of them already have cover photos, but most of them you'll need to just add in your own cover photo. So add in a cover photo. We have major task here and then we have the dates of course, and then you could dive into weekly goals. So I do this every single Sunday. I open this up and you can put in your weekly goals in here. Any tasks that you have from last week that you did not complete are automatically going to be populated in here, okay, from week two. And I'll show you how that appears in a second. So new task for this week. So this is, so you have your weekly goals and then you want to break them down into physical tasks as well, okay? Then what you do is you then divide them into days. And this says zero, zero, zero. So basically you can put in like work day, right? 
concentration day, maybe cold calling day. For your theme of the day, if you want to structure it that way, you can do that here. So I did give you that option. Then when you go into work, the way that I typically like to do it is I'll do block one and block two. So for me, my most productive time is going to be in the morning and I block it out in two time blocks. And then I do lunch and I do everything after lunch. So my most concentrated time where my phone is in the other room, right? It's all the way back there and I am just locked in. I have one main task and I'm just sitting here in this chair getting stuff done until that task is done. That's block one, take a small break. Then you have block two, block two, you want to plan that out, you dive in. Then from there it's lunch. And then after lunch is when I do all my meetings, sales calls, that kind of stuff, right? Like team meeting, any training that I have to do, all that goes after lunch. So that's how you can structure it. That's how I like to structure it. Again, if you, if you're doing something different, you can obviously type in whatever you'd like here. Then we have life to do list, right? So this is, I need to buy a new backpack. You can put that in, you can structure notes. You can add in your notes as well. Another tab that I actually like to add and I'll make sure this is actually added uh, on here, but I add a tab and I call it learning. So I rename this to learning and essentially the way it works is I actually put in what I'm learning this week. So instead of saying that I read a book a day or a book a week, I just have a theme for a week where, where if I'm going to learn something every single day, I give it a theme. So let's say if there's a theme of copywriting, I need to get better at copywriting or I need to get better at Facebook ads. So that entire week I'm consuming content around that theme, right? And this is super powerful because this aligns your whole week into that one topic. If you're, if you're spending one day reading Facebook ads, one day copywriting, one day SEO, like your mind's kind of all over the place. So I do one theme, let's say it's copywriting. I would put that in here. And now I know that if you're procrastinating or if you are learning about something else, you're watching YouTube videos on another topic, or maybe it's productivity, you're watching YouTube videos on something else, exit out. That is not your theme for the week. If it's urgent, I guess go out and learn it. But for the most part, I stick with that theme and that allows me to be aligned and it allows me to learn things consistently and really give it a week's effort. So as you scroll down, you'll see all of them are in here. I just typically make this full screen right here so I can see it. And then as we scroll down, we have Saturday, Sunday, in case you want to add stuff in there, it's in there and then also outstanding tasks. So any tasks that you have in here, because inevitably you'll probably have things that you don't finish. So what you can do is then take those tasks and just simply drag it and drop it into here. So let's say we'll type in enter task. So let's say you didn't finish this one. You finished this one. You would just check it off like that. And then once you're in here, you could, you can then just take this, put it inside here. And now when you check week four, that's going to appear right here, tasks from last week. It's going to automatically appear in this section. So whenever you go into the new week, you're gonna automatically get a list of stuff that you didn't complete last week. So super cool there. Let me delete this for you guys. All right, so let's go back. All right, so now you are, that was the weeks. And then what you're going to do is look at the quarterly reviews, or you could do this first if you'd like. Anyways, here are the dates of each quarter. When you're setting your quarterly goals, you can open this up. Now you can see quarter goals. We see this one. We have 20% needle mover activities. So again, I believe in the 80-20 rule. So 20% of your activities make up 80% of your effort. I like to write these down, right? You have your Q1 goals, and let's just identify what are your 20% activities? What can you do that really moves the needle forward in your business, in your life, in your school, whatever it is that you are using this for. So you would put that in here, right? Okay, things to learn, improve on. And again, this will give you ideas for when you're planning your learning. This will give you ideas and you can always reference this. Okay, experiments, things to test. So when you're trying new things, I like to view them as experiments. That way when you fail, you don't judge yourself. There's no you don't feel bad about it. It's an experiment that simply did not work and that is it. So experiment things to test, right? Maybe you wanna test YouTube, making a YouTube video, right? That kind of stuff, I'm gonna do that in Q1. And anyways, stuff like that you can put in here. Then what we have is a not to-do list and this is gonna be super important as well because a not to-do list could be things like checking social media, checking Instagram, looking at my phone, right? Having a screen time of X. So a not to do list is also very important because we all have bad habits and you want to get rid of those habits, right? It's not always about adding stuff. I want to go to the gym. I want to do this. I want to do that. 
Sometimes it's just about removing things, removing the negative things. And that's what this is for. Then we have notes and then end of quarter, you can see we have biggest achievement, we have progress on annual goals, then we have what worked, what didn't work. And this is you doing like a post game analysis. No one really does this, but I love doing this kind of stuff. You look at your past quarter, you really review it. What did I do right? What did I do wrong? What am I gonna continue doing? What am I gonna change? Maybe if you fell off track, you know, why did I fall off track? Really ask yourself these questions and then you'll be able to really make an educated decision based on your Q2 goal, right? And this way you're always improving, you're always moving forward and you're collecting data. All right, so next thing that we are going to cover is gonna be the top 20% activities. And by the way, all that Q stuff that we talked about, if you open up any one of those, it's very, very similar, right? Q1, Q2, Q3. So you can do your post-game analysis, also plan for your next quarter. And this will allow you to not fall off track on your goals because you're just always reviewing them. Right, so let's dive into top 20% activities. So let's say you're growing a software with a service business like I have, maybe your goals to travel. So the top 20% in this business is let's say send DMs on Instagram and LinkedIn. You wanna set more appointments, close more appointments, close more deals. Also follow up with your leads, right? Get on the phone, get on Zoom. These are your top 20% activities. It's really about prospecting. Then what I like to do is also have an other tab here and in other section. This is other stuff that's important that you absolutely must do, but it's not in that top 20%. So again, I take my top 20% and I make sure I do that in the morning. You wanna get that stuff done before lunch. Your most important tasks should be done before lunch. So other, talk to clients, get feedback on SaaS program, if that's what you're offering, create better or more offers to promote, create a go high level system in place that automatically onboards them or maybe that automatically creates their account for them and so forth. Test AI tools, test new prospecting method, maybe you're testing bots and contact forms and, and other stuff, you do that after lunch. Now, as you start getting clients, this will be a little bit more complicated because maybe clients will contact you, they, they kind of call you out of the blue. So it's important to, to keep your boundaries tight. I don't actually even really answer most phone calls before noon because my phone is in the other room. Below that, I have a projects section. Now again, this is all demo stuff. You can take this and really make it your own. Let's say that you are building the Go High Level AI SaaS business that is under active. And you wanna manage this and it's my opinion that you don't want to do 10 million different businesses. Again, that's my opinion. I've tried that, didn't work. I like focusing on one thing and doing that one thing very, very well, getting clients in that one thing and really having that my main thing. That is how I've grown and that what has worked for me. So I would really manage this, right? Let's say you also want to buy a rental property. Let's say you want to start a marketing agency where all you're doing is Facebook ads or something. So you can put that under potential so you can see all your projects, but let's say you're also in school. So active would be building a go high level AI SaaS business. Maybe it's building a SWAS business. And then maybe below that would be full-time student, right? This way it gives you a visual kind of bird eye view of what it is that you are working on. So next thing is month. So we have the monthly log right here. And there's also a habit tracker, which we'll cover here in a second. So for the monthly log, let me put this down here. What we'll do is you can actually click a month and inside of that month, you will see that we have, okay, monthly goals, right? So we have yearly goals, quarterly goals, and then also monthly goals. You can put in that monthly goal here. And also you see all the weeks right here. And then we have the habit tracker for that month as well. And you can see all of that in here, right? So we have a bunch of sections in here. You can check these off like so. That's how you would do it and you can really track your habits all inside of here. Plus there's actually another section for the habit tracker, which we'll cover here in a second as well. And then below that, you can also journal and reflect on that month. So again, if you want to go above and beyond, go into reflection, right? What worked in the past month? What didn't? How do I improve next month? What did I learn this month? What's my hope for next month, right? What are my goals? And then you can also journal on this as well a little bit, right? So free space. You can also type, hit enter a bunch of times and you have space to, to type, to journal, to do whatever it is that you have to do. And we have that for every single month. So I hope you enjoy that, that monthly calendar. And then lastly, what we have is the habit tracker. You can view all of it inside of here. When you click on habit tracker, 
and this loads, then what you'll see is again, that same filtration system right here where it says date. So we have habit tracker and you can feel free to replace the items with your goals and some of the stuff that you're doing. So again, just give it a date range, right? Give it like a range and then you'll see only the habits for that specific day. I left it open so you guys can change it and, and so forth. And then lastly, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, I have a notes section. So this is randomly sometimes if I'm looking at this and I get, let's say a phone call from a potential client that we're doing outreach to, or maybe it's an existing client and I just need to jot some things down ASAP and then move it later on. I can just do that here. There's just notes. I type in the, the client's name, exactly what we want, or maybe the phone call conversation, really just anything that happens in life or in business. I'll just add to this note section and then I can always later move it to that specific date or, you know, turn it into to do's or, or whatever it may be. I've also added quotes in here and like motivational type stuff as well. And you can potentially do something like that as well. All right. So if you actually want access to this template, you just want to hit one button, duplicate and have it in your account. What you're going to do is go over to bestagencytools.com and it's a free course. You can enter in your information. You're going to get access to all this stuff. And on there, we have a file right here. It's best agency and AI money making tools. If you're interested in my business and essentially how I'm able to travel and, and make money and basically how I run my entire company, you can also check that out here. But the actual notion template is going to be inside here. You're going to click that. It's going to open up a document like this. And if you scroll down again, these are all my tools that I use for my company, but we have notion right here. And maybe by the time you're watching this, we have way, way more. So you're going to click this link right here. And when you click that, it's going to open up this page. And after you make a notion account, right? You hit try notion, or if you already have an account, you're going to click duplicate and then it's going to copy over into your account. Again, if you want to make it dark mode, you certainly can, but this is kind of the, the standard and what it looks like. Again, we have that timer and we have everything that we covered in this video right here and you can customize it, change the images, change the cover photos, and you can do everything you want from here and fully customize it to fit you, to fit your needs and your business. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value from it. Let me know in the comments if you're doing something like this already. Let me know if you use it and how you like it and I will see you in the next one.